This is the Kennedy Space Center shuttle control, and we now have live pictures of the space shuttle Discovery riding atop the modified Boeing 747 as it approaches the Kennedy Space Center. Plan is for the 747 to land at KSC shuttle landing facility somewhere shortly after 10 o'clock today, Eastern Time. This vehicle departed Barksdale Air Force Base in Louisiana at about 7.20 Eastern Time en route to KSC. This is the last leg of the trip following its landing at Edwards Air Force Base, concluding its mission STS-114 that landed at Edwards Air Force Base on August the 9th. Discovery logged 5.8 million miles in space before its touchdown back on Earth in California. Discovery coming back to Florida, a welcome sight to Kennedy Space Center residents as it flies by the uh, Banana River and the Banana Creek area en route to a landing here at the shuttle landing facility. The vehicle did a short flyby of the Brevard County beaches. Coming up near the Patrick Air Force Base area up through Cocoa Beach, Cape Canaveral, giving the residents of Brevard County a a visual of the vehicle uh, before it touches down and prepares for its deployment back to the operations facility here at Kennedy Space Center. Various cameras around KSC are tracking this as we watch it live from Kennedy Space Center. We have cameras on the vehicle assembly building roof. We have cameras at the mate demate device and various points along the shuttle landing facility. The 747, Boeing 747 that is actually carrying the uh, Discovery is, uh, was actually in commercial use at uh, one point in its lifetime. Uh, NASA purchased two Boeing 747s, uh, one from American Airlines and one from Japan Airlines. The 747 orbiter combination is about 75 feet long. And the entire height of it from the vertical stabilizer of the vehicle down to the landing wheels of the 747 is about 63 feet high. The entire length of the 747 is uh, 231 feet, 10 inches long, with a wingspan of 95 feet. Fuel consumption is 6,154 6, gallons per hour with the shuttle attached. Just to put that in perspective, the SCA uses one gallon of fuel to travel the length of the airplane when it's flying a ferry operation such as this. Coming in on its final approach now, the landing gear on the 747 are down. Again, this is the final leg of a three-hop flight starting in California, going to Altus Air Force Base in Oklahoma, spending two nights at Barksdale Air Force Base in Louisiana before coming in this morning here at Kennedy Space Center. This is a welcome sight for employees at KSC to see the vehicle back in town, moments away from touchdown. Discovery is returning back to KSC. Main gear down. And nose gear touchdown. Discovery is back at Kennedy Space Center. Landing on the runway going north to south. 747 will continue to taxi toward the end of the runway. Once there, it will stop. Passing the midfield point right now. Once at the end of the runway, it will stop and a tow truck will be brought out to it to actually tow it into the mate demate device where over the next several hours, Discovery will be lifted off the back of the 747. The 747 will be removed, backed out, and Discovery will be lowered down on its landing gear. And then this time tomorrow, it will be towed back to the orbital processing facility in 
completion of mission STS 114. 114. Once in the orbiter processing facility, the payload bay doors will be opened and destow operations of the materials brought back from the International Space Station will begin. Discovery is now slated to fly on the next space shuttle mission, currently targeted for no earlier than March of 2006, mission STS-121, back to the internet.